1871, Kaiser Wilhelm of Prussia is about to be proclaimed the first German emperor. It is a title which never existed before, because Germany as a nation did not exist until this moment. Attending the ceremony is Wilhelm's prime minister, the man most responsible for the birth of this new nation of Germany. His name, Otto von Bismarck. For Bismarck, it is a day of triumph the culmination of 10 years of work. We, Wilhelm, King of Prussia, by the grace of God, now agree to accept the honor and title of emperor and proclaim our holy duty to serve a united German fatherland. This we do in the name of the German people. Long live his imperial majesty, Kaiser Wilhelm. Long live our Kaiser. Oh, 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 oh. The creation of a unified Germany in 1871 radically changed the balance of power in Europe. It was also an event that would cast an ominous shadow over much of the future of Western history. Bismarck was born in 1815 into an aristocratic Prussian family, there was no such nation as Germany. In the towns and villages scattered throughout the area, the inhabitants thought of themselves not so much as Germans, but as Saxons, Prussians, Hessians, Bavarians. How could these different peoples be united into one country? In 1848, a popular revolution broke out which aimed to create a democratic, unified Germany. But the people's will was not powerful enough. The revolt lost momentum and was crushed by military might. For Bismarck, the lesson of history was clear. People didn't make nations. Strong leaders and wars did. By 1871, Bismarck's hopes were realized. Germany was born. <laughs> Champagne. That evening, Bismarck relaxed with his wife and two friends who had come to celebrate the occasion with him. Both were Americans, one from his student days in Berlin, Jack Motley, the other a young reporter from New York named Elliot. With them, Bismarck would share his thoughts of what had led him to this moment of triumph. We simply understood this century long before the others. It's not cannons that made the other Germans dependent upon Prussia, but our factories, our industry, our economic strength. How was it that you were, uh, well, a right-wing anti-parliamentarian? Right-wing, left-wing, meaningless labels. A statesman must wait, listen he hears the step of God sounding through events. Man, he must reach up, grasp the hem of his garment. My king called me ten years ago, and he had no one else to turn to. And his precious parliament wouldn't let him pay our military bills. No money for defense. The army in chaos. But when the economic weather turns rough, kings always look to men like me. Abdication is impossible, Majesty. The world would interpret it as weakness. But my whole parliament is against me, Herr von Bismarck. The Queen does not admire you. How can I afford to offend my daughter-in-law? Her mother, Queen Victoria, is... Anything Majesty feels strong enough to offer me, I feel strong enough to accept. My Prime Minister? Yes, Majesty. Without a parliamentary majority? Certainly. Without a budget? 
With pleasure. <laughs> They'll call you a dictator. Parliament, the people. Your Majesty, it is neither by speeches in Parliament nor by majority resolutions that the great issues of our time will be decided. By what, then? By iron and blood, Majesty. Iron and blood. Well, of course, the Liberals continued to oppose me, went through all the expected motions, but afterwards, when they saw what I was leading them, they were quite prepared to put Prussia first, Germany second, and parliamentary procedure seventh, shall we say? But the ordinary man. Who? The man you govern, Otto. Oh, him. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think I understand the ordinary Prussian. He wants bread, he wants work, he wants the outside world to respect his country, but most of all, he wants order. Order. And that I gave him. Yes, order and war. First, a small but profitable war against Denmark. Believe me, Jack, I dislike war. It's a clumsy, messy method. But I am God's soldier. I must go where he leads. As a first step towards unification, Bismarck manufactured a war against Denmark in 1864. Prussia was victorious, and the Germanic people felt the beginning of a sense of national pride. The small territories of Schleswig and Holstein had been under Danish rule. Now they fell under the domination of Prussia. The first pieces of a future united Germany were being added. Despite the growing might of Prussia, the smaller German states still looked to Austria for leadership. To pry them away and eventually to absorb them, Bismarck now embarked upon the second stage of his plan for unification, war against Austria. And now you want to attack Austria. Without warning, Denmark is one thing, but to provoke the Habsburgs, I cannot possibly agree. No, 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 nor will Parliament. I have no intention of asking Parliament. Your Majesty, it is only outside Prussia that we can strengthen our position inside Germany. One day, Your Majesty will be Emperor of all Germany. But only if Prussia is recognized once and for all for what it is. Not only Germany's leading industrial power, but also its military brain. It is not easy to rule under you, Bismarck. Furthermore, it is time we showed our brothers in the South that Austria cannot be relied upon to defend them from outside attack. It is to Prussia they must turn. Yes, but... If the King of Bavaria... Who? If Ludwig goes bankrupt, as he must if he goes on squandering his country's defense funds, it will not be Franz Joseph of Austria who saves him from his enemies, but you, Majesty. Ah. Yes. That is so, I suppose. But... Your Majesty, it must be shown to be so. Austria has treated Prussia for too long as an old retainer at the Imperial table. That idea must be adjusted. Yes, but not by war. Never a war which fails to provide us with benefit. Austria has deceived us over Schleswig-Holstein. We could hardly substantiate that claim. We could make out a case. Besides, we can prove they're mobilizing. But not against us, Bismarck. They are aggressors. They always have been. Your Majesty, one swift victory over Austria. General Moltke has 200,000 men in the field. My wife was right. You want to be a dictator. To be a dictator is never an end. 
It is only a means to an end. But Germans shooting at Germans? No, I won't have it. Then I resign. No. I shall throw myself from your balcony. Any other course would be dishonorable. Typical. You overstepped the mark, and now you want to leave me in the lurch. After all I've done for you. Majesty, my sole ambition has always been to make Prussia worthy and strong enough to preside over an indissolubly united fatherland. But France, Napoleon! Napoleon will be delighted to play the referee in our quarrel with Austria. He's too weak to do anything else. Then you're asking me, asking me to mobilize without delay. Very well then, mobilize. I should have mobile, my wife say. Mobilize. If your promise will win. Well, we may lose. But if we do, I myself shall fall in the final attack. On that, Majesty, you have my word. In 1866, the King didn't want war. And then, when we had defeated the Austrians at Königgrads, he didn't want to stop. Your success is complete, Majesty. Vienna lies at your feet. In that case, on to Vienna! Let's take it by storm! No! No, Your Majesty. Now we'll play the protector in Germany. What? Not exploit this wonderful victory, Bismarck? Oh. Oh, give Napoleon a chance to intervene? No. I shall take Vienna. I'll give Moltke his orders. In that case, Majesty, I shall no longer be able to serve you. I started this war. If I can't end it now, we shall have butchered 40,000 men in vain. I might as well be dead myself. Majesty! We may be in the line of fire. It's only a rear guard, But might I suggest... On to Vienna! Okay. Your Majesty, may On I... On to Vienna! Excellency, what are His Majesty's orders? All-out attack? On to Vienna? On the contrary. To the conference table. But Excellency, does His Majesty... His Majesty has a fine military brain. You. Politically, he's a child. I'm not interested in a humiliated Austria. We shall need her soon enough. Need Austria? As allies. When the time comes to settle accounts with our one remaining obstacle to national unity. Excellency. Napoleon. France. With the northern states of Germany now united, public opinion suddenly claimed me for its own with the same assurance with which it had previously rejected me. Permeating from the higher orders down to the lower classes, Nationalism, now attained in Prussia, indeed in all Germany, the dimensions of a popular movement. The German nation had learned on which side its bread was buttered. Ugh, the Prussian side. An Emperor Franz Joseph? No, oh, we became the best of friends. <laughs> C'est la vie. Four years later, when the Spaniards chased their queen off the throne, I knew our time had come. He proposed the king's cousin, Prince Leopold of Hohenzollern, as a candidate for the vacant throne. A Prussian prince to rule Spain. Well, I knew the French would object. And object they did. At gunpoint. And how does the king react to that? By taking the waters, my boy. Taking the waters.
But what can I do? Napoleon insists that we withdraw the candidacy of my cousin. We can match France, Majesty. If all the German states join in behind us, yes. They will, Majesty. If France attacks, we shall not be the aggressor. Bismarck, we simply cannot ignore international opinion. Majesty, I cannot sacrifice my honor to such political expediences. Public enthusiasm cannot be marinated like herrings. It must be consumed at once. Be that as it may, Count Bismarck, I am bound to tell you that I have already informed the French ambassador that we may be prepared to renounce my cousin's candidature. In that case, Bismarck. My resignation is on my desk, Majesty. Ready for signature. Stop, I say! When will you realize your machinations are making pressure hated throughout the world? Not hated, Majesty. Feared. You will not resign. You will not go until I order you to go. This telegram is to be dispatched to Paris at once. Do you hear? At once. This time, we make the decisions. You are altering the King's telegram, Excellency. Mm. Editing it, okay. It is rather long, wouldn't you say? To make it sound a little less conciliatory? A little more abrupt. They're an excitable lot, the French. Napoleon is sure to be incensed. Well, let's hope so, Malke. Let's hope so. When the French declared war on us, as I knew they would, a wave of national sentiment swept Germany. At last, all the German states were united in a common goal. In six months, we defeated Napoleon III's armies, and only Paris held out. Appalling! Majesty, these reports about the behavior of our soldiers and their officers in occupied territories. Never have the French suffered the defeat of such proportion. In the eyes of the civilized world, we have become monsters. The only way to win this war is to end it quickly. I repeat, Paris must be shelled and take no more prisoners. Corpses need neither food nor shelter. My troops would refuse to obey such an order. Then shoot your troops for disobedience. But first, sell Paris. I've tired myself out for three years to make this conflict possible. This merely dots the I's and crosses the T's. Excellency, thousands of women and children will die needlessly. I attach no importance to human life, General. 
I am a Christian. I believe in another world. Your Majesty. Two sons fighting in this war, Majesty. We both won iron crosses. Do you think I wanted to go on for one day longer than is absolutely necessary? No. I think you simply want to destroy France. I can see it in your eyes. giant arrow carrying you to its target, the imperial throne of a united Germany, one nation under Prussia's leadership. But the German princes, they all have their own ambitions. The German princes will be proud to serve the king of Prussia. Our treasury will see to that. Imperial Majesty. You are my only friend. My only true friend. How could I ever have doubted your intentions? Then instruct your generals, Majesty. Let the cannons roar. In the flames of a burning Paris, We'll forge a united German Empire that will endure for a thousand years. Paris was shelled. France collapsed. And now there was no one who could block a united Germany. Agreed, Majesty. Even on the vexed question of Alsace Lorraine. Alors, il y a encore cette question des réparations. Six milliards. C'est une indignité. Translation. His Majesty feels that six milliards in war reparations to be a, a national indignity. Very well, as His Majesty commands. Five milliards. Made. And we relinquish our claim to Belfort. What is not without compassion? Compassion. Documents. Paris is in revolt. My people are reduced to eating rats. Revolution. Disease, death, anarchy. Well, I assure you, we have similar problems in our own country, Majesty. Democrats, Republicans, Socialists. What do you do with your troublemakers? To encourage them, of course. Encourage? Certainly. Provoke insurrection while you still have the power. But then crush it like a fly for good. Will your Imperial Majesty now sign? Mephiez-vous, Bismarck. With where? Of what, sir? I will forgive you. History will forgive you. But my people will never forgive yours. Peut-être, Majesty. Peut-être. 
If Germany is to be an empire, its head must be called Emperor. I am King of Prussia. I know of no greater title. German Emperor, Majesty. If my title must be changed, then um, Great King of Prussia. German Emperor, Majesty. Or possibly uh, King of Greater Prussia. Yes. German Emperor, Majesty. I will not be ordered by one of my subjects what titles I shall hold. Uh, I might, uh, might, mark you, consent to uh, Emperor of Germany. The princes will interpret Emperor of Germany as a future claim on their territories. If we are to have a lasting unity... Emperor of Germany! My last word on the subject. German Emperor, Majesty! Emperor of Germany. Good day, Majesty. For this I swear I'll never forgive you, Miss Bog. I'm on the throne, remember? What does that matter who's on the throne? I govern. And yet, you know, Jack, all my life I've yearned for what I couldn't have. Oh, but now you have it all. A powerful, unassailable Prussia leading a united Germany. Yeah. To keep it united, we need the national will of the German people. And that unfaltering faith in a class of natural leaders. Uh, Junkers, you mean? Like yourself? Men of vision. Men of unshakable national idealism. Men prepared to die in the defense of that idealism. Yeah. Dawn. <laughs> the only time when I can sleep. Well, thank you very much, sir. Good morning, Mr. Elliot. You tell your people I'm not such a monster. Well, Jack, my old friend, why not come and build your wigwam here in Prussia, eh? <laughs> We distill excellent brandy on this estate, you know. I know. Profitable, too. <laughs> well, Elliot? Very great man, sir. And yet, most people can only perceive despotism triumphant.